Um, hi, um, my name is Ewan. Um, I'm from Citrix, as you can tell from the corporate branded slides, which at great expense put together in PowerPoint. So this is a uh, this presentation comes from PowerPoint through to LibreOffice running on a Mac, so I'm quite amazed that it's actually displaying at all. Um, Zen Server Core. Now this is uh, this is the official uh, spelling of Zen Server Core, and uh, your. Uh, uh, um, James Bulpin took away my shift key. I'm not allowed to use capital X's and S's and things, so we're going to have to have a word with Anil about his slides. Um, this is uh, this is joint work with Dave Scott, who's the uh, Zen Server architect. He's uh, not able to be here. He um, he does all the hard work of splitting up the packages and uh, and making them all work in the weird environments we put them in. And I sort of swan about and writes a few pi write a few Python scripts and get to come here and take all the credit. So it's a it's a good division of labour for me. Um, what is Zen Server Core? Well, it's basically a, a, a way for us to try and get the bits of Zen Server or a Zen Server-like system in front of as many people as possible as easily as possible. Um, it's also part of our of our scheme to to try and get uh, our components upstreamed into into distributions like Fedora and Ubuntu. Um, so. Um, where the um, what's actually in it is um, this is a bit like uh, John's slide from previously. We package mo all the tool stack stuff, the Zappy and friends. Um, we also package uh, some other creature comforts which uh, aren't really part of Zappy, like uh, the storage managers and um, the uh, XS console and so forth. Because what we're really trying to do is to get some, a system which looks as much like Zen Server as possible on, on a standard uh, Linux distribution. We don't include, oh, for things from this slide, we don't include QMU, we don't include drivers, and we don't include Zen. Um, that's mostly because these uh, components are already upstreamed uh, and working very nicely in, in Ubuntu and in, in CentOS. Um, and so we just piggyback on that work. Um, we might in future uh, make it possible to, to build in the, in the Zen Server core build stuff that I'm going to talk about in a sec. Uh, we might make it possible to build those packages because there are things, like patch queues and so forth, that we develop inside Citrix which have got useful features that people might want to use. But um, right now, if you want to install this on, 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 on Ubuntu or on, or on CentOS, what you're going to end up using is the kernel and Zen that comes from that distribution. Um, here's a different way to look at it. This is a, uh, a diagram that James had on a blog a little while ago. Basically, uh, there's a layer cake. Zen Server Core is essentially the top layer. Um, um, as you can see, the particular example of Zen Server on CentOS, um, the Zen for CentOS extra packages, that's an extra repository which has the Zen uh, spec files and various other bits and bobs, other RPMs for CentOS 6.4. We, as in Citrix, are quite uh, corporate, uh, working quite closely with, with CentOS in, in maintaining that and, and, uh, and getting that stuff all working well. But it's not, um, uh, uh, it's not part of the Zen server core effort per se. Um, in future, you may also be able to write and be, um, use the, uh, the ISO spinning tools that CentOS and other distributions uh, have to build your own custom ISO, which installs a Zen server-like system. Um, but again, that's, that's not quite where we are at the moment. So what we're really hoping is that um, if, if you take nothing else away from this talk today, uh, we would really like for you to try this thing to install it on a machine that you have lying around um, and, uh, and, um, and let, give us feedback on how you get on. Because um, the whole point, the, 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 the practical um, point of Zen Server Core is to make it as easy as possible to get Zappy and so forth deployed on, on your Linux box. Um, and so for most people, um, it's going to practically, it's going to be something like this. Um, on CentOS, you can add a pointer to our Zen Server Core repository, um, which lives uh, currently on, on zenbits.org, but we'll have a more official um, permanent home for that. Um, you'll also need to add the EPL, EPEL repository if you're doing this on CentOS. Um, if you're doing it on Fedora, um, you're, you, should, uh, you shouldn't need that, um, because there are some bits and bobs that don't go in Red Hat or Enterprise Linux or in CentOS, but that are required for, for building. 
Um, also, as of a, f a couple of weeks ago, um, Ubuntu people are, are equally supported. Um, and this is because although um, Zen Server itself is, we started off with CentOS because Zen Server is an RPM based uh, product. Um, so we had all the spec files available um, and that was a, a good place to start. But a lot of people, even within Citrix, are fans of Ubuntu and would rather um, be able to deploy on and uh, develop on, on Ubuntu. So um, we, uh, we have a, a bit of a hack, which I'll discuss later, to, uh, to uh, reuse a lot of the effort that we put into making the RPMs on, on, um, um, on Ubuntu. Actually, my favorite command isn't apt-get install Zen Server Core, it's actually apt-get upgrade Zen Server Core. That's really nice, you can rebuild your packages, rev the, rev the um, uh, uh, bump, the, the revision on the package, and then um, with a couple of, of minor bugs at the minute, you can basically say apt-get upgrade and it will upgrade, restart your services and, and, and work. Um, and I've been using that uh, in development, it's really nice, very pleasant way of working. But whatever you choose to do, what you actually get after installing this stuff and rebooting, and I'm not sure if it's actually coming out super well on this screen, is, as I've said, a, a, a Zen server-like system. So you've got Zappy, you've got our storage managers, you've got all the other bits and pieces that you'd expect to have. And it's sufficiently Zen server-like that you can connect to these things from Zen Center. Um, you can create VMs, you can do pooling, you can uh, move VMs around, and what this screenshot's showing, uh, if you can make it out, is from a demo I gave a little while ago, you've got um, um, Zen Center, there's a pool called Zen Server Core Pool, it's got three, VM, uh, three hosts in it, there's a VM uh, which is just moved from ST07 at the top to ST04. Um, and uh, those two terminal windows are showing that actually on ST07 it's, um, it's a standard CentOS 6.4 with uh, a Zen Server Core 0.9.0 installed and the machine below is uh, running Ubuntu um, with Zen Server Core 0.9.0. And what that shows is that because these uh, two machines had compatible hardware and they were running roughly equivalent versions of Zen, uh, we were able to migrate a VM from one to the other. Um, and that's something that was, that was quite fun to do. Um, but why are we doing this? Well, I, I've tried to, to, um, to, to cover that in, in so far, but just to, to recap, we're doing this because we want Zen Server to be as attractive as possible to developers outside Citrix, um, to users outside Citrix, but really very much to developers. Uh, they might be partners um, to our developing um, co um, products which integrate with Zen Server itself, or it might be open source projects like OpenStack where we're really keen to uh, make Zen Server or Zen uh, as, as good uh, a hypervisor base as possible. Um, and the, the reason for doing the, all this packaging work is that so Zen, uh, Zen Server has been fully open source now for, for a few months. Zen Server 6.2 is, is, a, is a, you can download it for free from Citrix. Uh, and use it without uh, without any encumbrances. Um, but it's packaged as an appliance. Uh, it's an ISO, you have to have a spare machine to install it on. Um, and um, of course, many developers don't have the luxury of having a spare machine that they can just use, especially if they're trying only trying out Zen for the first time. So all of this effort is, is, is going into trying to make it possible for you to kit your existing machine, like um, John's laptop that he get, uh, is using just now, and install Zen Server Core on that and use it to do things like, like present your, your, your Mirage VM presentation, um, which I was very pleased worked, because otherwise I would have had to, uh, had to distance myself from that. <laughs> um, so um, in future, we are hoping to get these packages upstreamed into, into your distribution so that they'll actually just be there. Um, currently, you have to add uh, a, a repository uh, that, we're, that we're hosting. Uh, but most of us here are developers, um, and so what we're particularly interested in is how, how we can actually build this thing. So being able to install it is great, but, um, but what we really want to do is tinker with it, uh, see how it works, change it, break it, rebuild it. So 
For us, the other practical upshot of, of, of Zen Server Core is that you can do something which looks a little bit like this. It isn't quite a, a valid git command, but anyway. Um, the, all of this code exists on GitHub. Um, and um, you can clone it, you can, uh, and then the, we put quite a lot of effort into making it easy to build using a very simple sort of configure, make, make, install, lookalike process. Um, this is, so, so inside Citrix, uh, Zen Server is built using a very complicated uh, build system which has evolved over the years and does all kinds of exciting things and cooks dinner for you and washes up afterwards. But it's very dependent on infrastructure that exists within Citrix and of course that's not very helpful if you're just trying to get it to build on your laptop. So um, so with Zen Server Core all you have to do is clone this repository. It comes with all the bits and pieces that you need to build. Um, if you clone it what you'll notice is you just get a large directory of spec files and a few Python and shell scripts which actually handle the build for you. Um, what happens when you do the build well, here's, here's how you do it. Clone it from, from github.com, run this um, configure.sh, which will set up um, um, the build tooling for you. Uh, we use mock on, uh, um, on CentOS so that the package builds are isolated from each other, uh, and configure will set that up for you. This make make line um, uh, is basically, instead of using automake or something like that, uh, it looks through all the spec files and produces a make file which will build things in the right order. That, uh, that separate um, line is going to go away soon uh, and it'll just, you'll just type make as usual. Um, and what you'll find is um, it will then download the sources for each component from their respective upstream repositories. So, in the case of all the Citrix components, that's GitHub again. Um, we tag versions of, of, of our sort of trunk builds uh, 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 on a fairly regular basis. Um, and so we, uh, and Zen Server Core points at those tags. So what you get is a, is a sort of curated snapshot of, of trunk of at least our components. Um, you'll also find in there some spec files for components which do exist upstream, but unfortunately we have to rebuild them because, for example, um, in Ubuntu, we don't have a new enough uh, um, OCaml compiler, uh, and so there are certain libraries that we could depend on from Ubuntu, but we have to rebuild them because our libraries are built within your compiler and they won't uh, they won't link. Uh, the build takes uh, about an hour uh, an hour or so on Ubuntu, and about an hour and twenty minutes or so on CentOS, depending on your machine. Um, we're all, always looking at ways of making it quicker. Um, so I have a branch for uh, which tries to do a parallel build, and it seems to work. But um, parallel builds are, are tricky things, so uh, so I'm uh, I'm holding fire on that until I'm certain that it's uh, that it's okay. Um, but um, it's sort of simultaneously working on the uh, on the internal build system. Uh, John has been doing some interesting work with RPM caching, and I'm hoping to be able to pull that into to to, uh, to the Zen Server core. Um, build system so that you can uh, you don't have to rebuild everything if you're just uh, playing around. It'd be nice if you could just pull down the, the, the hosted packages and rebuild only what you need. Currently it'll do, it will do a full build and that reflects the fact that it's a kind of a it's a distribution builder as uh, it started off as a distribution builder and we're, we're adding features to make it better as a developer uh, environment but, um, but, but um, a lot of the focus so far has been to build all the RPMs uh, from scratch so that you can install them. Um, this is what actually happens. Um, it's a very standard RPM building uh, uh, workflow. There's a spec file. Um, we, our, our tooling will download the tarballs. Uh, we also ship a few patches. Those are in the repository. Uh, all that gets fed into RPM build, which produces an SRPM file. Um, and that then goes through mock um, which is the sort of standard uh, shooting build tool for, for building binary RPMs. And at the end of it, you get a big pile of RPMs. Um, you can then point your machine at that directory of RPMs and say install, and, uh, and it should all work. Um, make Make um, is, is doing this part. Um, we've got at the top the spec file saying, for example, the camel QMP, particular version requires a bunch of packages um, and, um, and 
produces a bunch of targets. Make, make uses the RPM Python library to try and figure out what things that uh, that package requires to have installed and what things it's going to produce so that it can uh, build the, uh, the make file um, sort of dependency graph correctly. This was this is always a bit of a so I I I, I haven't uh, I abhor super overcomplicated uh, build systems uh, and try, I like to try and use um, standard uh, features wherever possible, which is why we're using make and so forth. But there doesn't appear to be a tool which really given to which you can at which you can throw a directory full of spec files and say just build those things. So uh, this is the uh, this is a, this is all custom hacks. Um, but it's using the RPM library, and it's not really a particularly large script. And, and again, it's 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 getting smaller and smaller as we move away from generating the whole make files to just doing the dependency stuff. But um, because it's useful to know what's going on when you're trying to build things, if it goes wrong, this make make is basically taking all the spec files and producing a make file. Um, uh, as of a couple of days ago, um, you can now also make install after your build is finished. Um, so there's an extra target in the make file which um, will configure um, yum to point at your local directory of RPMs. It will add that EPEL um, repository. It will do a few other tweaks and then uh, run uh, apt get or so yum installs in server core. Um, so from from a developer's point of view, you really can just do basically it, it's like muscle memory. You can do configure make make install. Um, you then run the the, uh, the Zen install wizard, which uh, which John mentioned in his talk, which does all the sort of in, it does the sort of setup that the Zen server installer does. Um, we still need some some final um, setup. You then reboot, and you're you're in hopefully uh, a Zen server like environment. Um, so I mentioned Debian. Um, I gave this talk a little while ago, or uh, the talk which this one was based on a little while ago, at which point Debian was experimental, um, for us at least. Um, it's a bit less experimental now, because, uh, as, well, uh, as I mentioned, John's actually running it on his Ubuntu laptop. So um, how experimental does it feel to you? A little bit. A little bit, <laughs> yes. Right, that's the right answer. Um, um, it is a very new thing, and it's a little bit of a hack, and I'm looking around and I'm not seeing Ian Jackson, so I'm happy, because this is somewhat blasphemous, and as an ex-Debian person, or probably a, you know, an ex a very senior Debian person, and I'm sure still consider himself to be Debian to the core, he might kill me. Um, but um, again, why, when we started out, um, we built RPMs, because Zen servers are RPM based, but uh, many people within the company and outside um, uh, are Debian or Ubuntu users, um, and so we, it would seem nice to cater for them. Um, and uh, now we have been here before, so um, Kronos was mentioned, so Project Kronos actually took um, the components of Zen Server, packaged them up, and got them into Debian upstream. But as was mentioned, this was um, uh, it was a, a custom uh, handmade uh, packaging. Uh, a few things have changed since then. Well, first of all, Kronos um, has always lagged a little bit behind um, uh, sort of uh, the the tip of, of Zen server development. And one of our goals is to keep up with tip as we if we possibly can. And one of the reasons for that was that. Um, uh, it was a manually generated package, and so anytime you changed anything, you'd have to go and redo the Debian package as well as the as well as the RPM. And of course, there are times when things get forgotten or or or, or whatever. Um, so the other thing that's changed since then is that at the time of Kronos, there were a few packages in 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 Zen Server, um, but in the meantime, we've been busily splitting things up, uh, and now we have 50 or 60 or, or something, something of that order. So manually writing two sets of packages for that number of package files is, is, uh, is, is a wee bit, um, uh, it's, it's error prone and a lot of effort. So what we've done um, for Zen Server Core is we've come up with a, another uh, hacky Python script which takes a spec file the tarball and the patches that we all, that we had to to build the RPM, and then uh, generates a Debian uh, package directory for uh, for that uh, package. So instead of running it through RPM Builder, we run it through our own script. Um, it looks in the spec file. So 
for our packages, for most of our packages, what we're doing, in, uh, we're not using the super advanced features of RPM. So there's a fairly clean mapping from the RPM spec to the Debian. It's, you know, it, it's mostly um, which packages do we depend on, uh, and what do we provide, uh, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, so we map from the spec file to the Debian source. Uh, and the good thing about that, uh, the Debian source package, the good thing about that is that after that point, in the lower half of this slide, we're on a completely standard Debian package build path. Um, so the, uh, uh, the earlier version of this slide, we were actually using pbuilder, which is uh, a, an equivalent of mock in the Debian world. Um, and I switched to using cowbuilder, which is um, it's pbuilder using a copy on write um, mechanism, which makes things a little bit quicker. And it was simply a question of changing the word pbuilder to the word cowbuilder in the make file, because as far as those tools are concerned, they're just seeing Debian packages and they're happy. Um, so yeah, I, just, to, just to be clear, there are tools which will translate an RPM into a deb. Um, they seem to be more taking a binary RPM and turning it into a binary deb. What we're doing is taking a source RPM and turning it into a source deb. Um, and I think that works out better for us because we, you know, there, are still, there are a few uh, other tweaks that we need to make um, to, to fit in nicely on uh, with paths and so on, to fit in nicely on, on, on an Ubuntu machine. Uh, and those would be harder to do uh, if we were just working on the binaries. Um, anyway, I've survived through that, so there aren't too many, too many Debian people in the room. Um, what we really want, as I said to begin with, is for people to start to get involved. So this project's been going for a few months now, and it's it's at the point where it's it's somewhat usable, um, uh, and I think it, it it's uh, it. It would be great to have uh, other people trying it out and feeding back on what works, what doesn't, what, how we could improve it. Patches are welcome. Um, there's a uh, th there's a list of uh, of issues on GitHub, which uh, which people which, which and if you'd like to fix some of those, uh, then then I'd be very happy to to receive your patches. If you're a distribution maintainer then uh, I would love to talk to you about trying to get as more and more of these uh, of these bits upstreamed uh, because currently you have to add a dis add a repository it would be really nice if all of that stuff was already there um, as I said um, we are we're working uh, well the Citrix works works with CentOS on the uh, on the um, on the Zen for CentOS repository, uh, and we have these, these spec files. So I'm hopeful that, that, that getting into an, an RPM-based repository should be uh, should be quite straightforward. Uh, I'm very keen to talk to Debian people to see whether to see how I can make uh, make the, these packages as acceptable as possible to them. Um, so this is our GitHub page. Um, so yes, if you want to uh, if you want to contribute, those are the two things highlighted in red. Fork it, please. Uh, send us pull requests, please, um, and uh, and we will. We, we are very uh, happy to accept them. We, um, uh, if it uh, if it if it pushes things forward, uh, then then we're delighted. Um, we also ha uh, hang out on the uh, on the XS Devel mailing list with all the other uh, Zen server people, and we're also on Zen API on Freenode. But I'm pretty terrible at watching IRC, so if you if you ask for me on IRC and I don't respond, please don't take it personally. It's probably just buried on a on a on a on a window at the bottom of a stack on a desktop behind a sign mark beware of the leopard. Um, so what's next for this? Um, as I said, we're at the beginning of we're probably at the end of the beginning with it with Zen Server Core. It builds, it installs nicely. Um, we've smoothed out many of the of the hiccups that are many of the bumps that might uh, that might uh, cause you to be have a hard time installing this. Um, it installs fairly smoothly on on CentOS and on Ubuntu. It builds fairly smoothly on both of those also, um, and there isn't too much fiddling around. Especially now that we've got make install, you don't it used to have a set of instructions saying go and edit this file in yum, but now it does it for you. Um, we're beginning to hear from people just randomly by osmosis who've found out about this thing and have installed it and uh, they turn up and they complain about the build speed or whatever and we, we try to, to help them. 
Um, mostly they've had positive experiences. Uh, we haven't had too many people showing up and saying this just doesn't work, which is, which is nice. Um, we, one of the things that we're working on right now is getting more testing. We're actually uh, uh, trying, as I said, we're trying to get this to work nicely under OpenStack. So we're, we're working on getting the OpenStack uh, tests running with Zen Server Core as a hypervisor. And we're almost there with that. Um, we are so far we've made two tech preview releases from this code base. Uh, one of them was more specifically around Ceph. That was something that Dave talked about uh, at the CentOS Dojo a couple of months ago. Um, since we're approaching a stable point, we are hopeful that we'll be able to start pushing more frequent releases in, in, in quotes, uh, where a release is basically we will tag the Zen Server core repo saying, at this point, things seem to be pretty stable, um, and we will uh, perhaps build some RPMs and, and, and host them somewhere. Um, and that will, that, but we're hoping to, to produce these sorts of releases on a fairly regular basis, so that you're con if you follow Zen Server Core, you will continue to get something pretty close, as close as we can get you to the bleeding edge of, of at least our packages without cutting yourself too badly. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, we're not currently shipping kernel or Zen, but it's given that we are in a completely standard, after the, the initial make, make and, and make dev, we're in a standard uh, Ubuntu and, and CentOS build process. There's nothing that really prevents us from dropping in a spec file or a Debian source file for, for, the, uh, for the kernel or other components. So uh, we will probably make that an option at least in the future. Um, and uh, that's all I had, so um, uh, we have a little bit of time for questions, hopefully. Yeah, we have a minute or two for questions. Any questions? No questions. Excellent. <laughs> Plant. <laughs> <laughs> so could you comment a little bit on how, on how uh, Zen Server Core relates to Zen Server the ISO? Uh -huh. as shipped by a certain company in Cambridge. Yes. Uh, so, well, Zen Server Core is the, it's, it's a packaging of the um, tool stack components uh, which uh, go into, which, end, which also end up by a different route in the Zen Server ISO. Um, it's not Zen Server the product, but it does, um, contain what it does contain the tip of those tools and so um, many of the things that you'll see in Zen Server Core will quite possibly show up in Zen Server uh, in the future. Um, as I said we might uh, you may all, you, will, you might also be able to use the spinning tools in CentOS or Ubuntu to produce your own ISO um, that also, of course, won't be a Zen server. Yeah. The Zen server product uh, it, it, that you get from, from Citrix, although you can download it for free, you can also pay for support, and that's not something that we're looking at at the moment for Zen server core. Um, however, the, we're spending all this effort to develop tooling for packaging, and, 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 uh, and we are hoping to use much of that in the Zen server effort. So, so there's a convergence of tooling. Um, but uh, Zen server, the product, is a, is a special, you know, blessed thing from Citrix and uh, Zen Server Core is a, is a kind of a preview of what we're up to. Um, but it, just because a feature appears in Zen Server Core, you can't really fully, we can't guarantee that that thing will actually appear in a particular release of Zen Server. Uh, one of the really nice things about uh, Zappy is always the XORC API that uh, people can go through. Is this one? Mm -hmm. So is the, uh, I believe Zen Center is an open source, but it's a Windows only. Yes. Uh, does that incorporate the Zen Server Core? And has anyone from the community built any JavaScript or web-based APIs on top of this API? So I had a slide a way back here somewhere. Uh, this one. Um, so that is uh, Zen Center in the background talking to Zen to to Zen Server Core machines. Um, we have so the Zappy that we have is is trunk Zappy. Um, so um, if we do if we in in the Zen Server Core uh, are doing our jobs right, then um, it should work with anything that talks Zappy. Um, as for other tools, so um, I think there's something called Zen Orchestra and, and some other tooling around, um, around Zappy. 
Um, uh, the other point I would make is that we're trying to make this thing work really nicely under OpenStack. So, so OpenStack talks Zappy to 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 the to Zen Server, Zen Server Core to to get it to do what it wants. Um, so yeah, there are quite a few. It, there are many tools which will manage a Zen Server, and if any of those doesn't work with Zen Server Core, I'd consider that a bug, and I'd uh, I'd like you to raise an issue. Okay, I think we're out of time, so uh, let's give him a hand.